Omar here with uh, another video. This one's called Connected and Alone by Cheryl Turkle. Um, she made a couple good points today. So the whole thing was talking about um, social media and how even though we're connected, we're still alone. Uh, I believe the main point that she was trying to make is that we are more connected with, we expect more out of technology than we expect out of each other. <clears throat> Um, we rely more on technology to kind of connect us with everybody. Uh, uh, most of the points that she gave out is that nowadays people, she gave, showed pictures of people in corporate meetings, corporate offices, that during meetings that they're texting, they're sending messages, they're talking to other people, they're doing other things and paying attention to what's actually going on in the meetings. They, uh, is a sense of control, uh, to quote her, that we want to pay attention to only to the bits and pieces that we want to, so that's why we get on our phones because we control exactly what we want to see, what we want to do, uh, who we want to talk to, and all that. And then, when we're in a meeting or we're in class or whatever, we'll pay attention to certain parts that it, only the parts that we care about, the and the parts that interest us. Um, then, she went on to describe other things how kids nowadays don't even know how to have conversations with each other. They they rely so much on texting. She pointed out that a teenager said she, that one day he'd like to learn how to have a conversation with a person rather than actually have a conversation with a person. That right now he does everything to, through texting. Um, she made, she also referenced an interview she did with Stephen Colbert. And Colbert asked me that all the little sips, he called them, that we tweet about, that we post pictures about, that we, that we talk about, that don't, don't they equal up to one big gulp of real conversation? Uh, she said, no, it doesn't, because it's not face-to-face -face time. It's something completely different. Um, people now are more reliant on technology to make them happy because they, she quoted, that people are scared to make connections. They're scared to get hurt, they're scared of intimacy, intimacy. they're scared of getting to know another person because it takes effort and takes time. They rather much rather text or send emails or stuff like that because it doesn't require anything. You don't have to put in that face time and actually have to sit there with the person. And in a real conversation, the conversation goes, 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 and something might slip, you might say something dumb. You don't have that time to pause and think about what you're actually going to say. Um, she makes the argument that the best, that texting and all that, the best thing that it's for is to send little messages to somebody, uh, like her daughter, that the, before the lecture had sent her a message, good luck, you're going to do great. <clears throat> or even to say, she said, even to say things like, I love you, just little things like that. But her whole argument is that nothing beats being there in person, being able to talk to someone face to face. Um, most of us rely on technology for a lot of things. She also gave the example how we have these robots now that are being more, I think she said, sociable was the word she used, where they interact with people. She said she worked at a old at a retirement home, I believe. And what they did is they brought in these robots, and she would study and see how it is that they affected people. They'd have they'd have touch with people, sit there. I don't know, I don't think they talked, but just have that human companionship through robots. And she said that she saw this one woman come in and talk, uh, who had just lost a child, uh, talk to a baby seal or was playing with a baby seal robot or something to that effect, and the lady was confiding in it, and I guess the robot was showing sympathy for it or empathy. And she stepped back and she said that that was the saddest moment of her life because a robot can't feel empathy. It doesn't know what it's like to lose a life. It doesn't know how to do any of that. And so she made the point that we are relying more on human, uh, or less on human interaction and more on technology to get us by. And for me, I think that's true. Um, she did persuade me, but some of the things have already... Uh, I guess clicked with me because the first thing in the morning most people do and I myself included is that 
I'll wake up, I'll check my phone, see if there, I have any messages, any missed calls, any emails, class assignments, um, even before I get up to pray or read my scriptures. Uh, after that, it's throughout the day, it's texting people. I, I find myself in class sometimes tuning into the parts that I want to instead of paying attention to the whole class. I'll be sitting there flipping through Facebook, doing something else, um, instead of paying attention to what I, to classes. And it's it is almost easier to to text and to email and to do all those things and talk to a person face to face or be in have that real time with a person. But I still enjoy talking to people. I still enjoy being around people. So I don't think it's a problem for me, but I see how that has grown into a problem for other people and how it's getting harder for others to have conversation because it's so much easier just to sit down somewhere or be by yourself and just text someone. Technology gives us the illusion that we aren't alone even though we really are alone.